Hello, welcome to this lesson on alternating current, AC, and alternating voltage. We are splitting the lesson into two parts, and this is part one. We'll introduce alternating current and direct current. Make sure we understand period, frequency, peak voltage, peak current, and start thinking about how to work out power. In part two, we'll look at root mean square values of voltage and current, and how to use them when working out the power. You should already be familiar with electrical power calculations for simple DC circuits. For example, you should have seen this formula before, P equals I squared R. If not, you may want to go and prepare. If you're studying alternating currents for exam purposes, you'll probably find the lesson on oscilloscopes will also be useful to you. Let's start with direct currents, DC. Simply, a direct current is one that always flows in the same direction. For example, if you have a cell with a bulb and an ammeter, I've shown a digital ammeter so we can see the reading, the current always flows in the same direction, clockwise. Conventional current flows positive to negative. Let's suppose the current is 1.5 amps. We could plot a graph of current versus time. So at different times, the current is 1.5 amps. It's a steady, horizontal line. Of course, over a long period, the line will go down to zero as the battery cell gradually runs out. If we reverse the polarity, I've swapped the plus and minus on the cell, I've just turned it round. This happens. First of all, the ammeter reading will change to minus 1.5 amps. If I wanted to show that on the graph, I would plot a current of minus 1.5 amps. Alternating current is simply current where the direction of the current keeps reversing. It alternates. I could produce a crude version of an alternating current with this circuit. If I keep flipping the cell, turning it round, so I'm reversing the polarity, reversing the plus and minus, this would happen. Suppose we start off with it this way around for a second. Well, the current stays one and a half amps for a second. If I quickly reverse it, turn it round, the current would drop and become minus 1.5 amps. And I could keep it like that for another second. Then I could repeat the whole process. Flip the cell round, it goes back to plus 1.5 amps. Flip it again, it goes to minus 1.5 amps. I've produced a crude alternating current. It's one where the direction of the current keeps reversing. The same idea applies to alternating voltage, of course. If I connect connected a digital voltmeter across a bulb in the circuit, by repeatedly reversing the cell, reversing the polarity, I could make the voltage change from positive to negative. The digital voltmeter would read plus 3 volts, minus 3 volts. So I could have it on one way around 3 volts, then flip the cell quickly, and for a second leave it on minus 3 volts. Flip the cell quickly, and it goes back to plus 3 volts, and so on. An alternating voltage. Whenever we have alternating currents and voltages, it's usually a regular pattern. These graphs of current or voltage against time are often called waveforms, and they usually have a repeating pattern. And the time it takes for the pattern to repeat is given a name. It's called the period. The period, symbol capital T, is a time for a full cycle or full oscillation, measured in seconds, symbol S. Take a look at the graph on the right, you probably see what the period is. If we start off at zero here, the voltage goes up, stays at three, goes down to minus three, stays at minus three, goes back to zero. And then that whole pattern repeats. The time it takes to do one of these patterns is the period. The frequency is the number of patterns, number of cycles or oscillations in one second. It's measured in hertz, symbol capital H Z, or you could use seconds to the minus one, that's equivalent. Frequency and period are related. Frequency is one over period. F is one over T, therefore T is one over F. To understand that, just think about a period of a tenth of a second. Suppose T 
is one tenth of a second. How many full cycles, how many cycles would there be in one second? Well, I hope you can see there'd be ten. What you're doing is dividing one second by a tenth of a second to see how many of them there are in each second. The frequency is one divided by a tenth, which is ten hertz. And that's general formula. Frequency is one over the period. Period is one over the frequency. So take a look at the graph on the right. Can you work out the period and frequency from the data on the graph? If you want to pause the video, you can to give yourself a chance to work it out. And here's the answer. T is two seconds. It's fairly easy to see the pattern repeats every two seconds. Frequency is one over period. One over two is 0 0.5. So the frequency is 0 0.5 hertz. It means half an oscillation each second. Here's a, a question for you. Look at the graph. The question is, does this graph show AC or DC? Pause and try answering. I'll give you the answer in a moment. And it's a trick question. The answer is DC. A lot of people associate this pattern with an alternating current. And it can be. But the way I've drawn it, the current is always positive. It never goes to zero, and never goes negative. So it represents a direct current whose size is changing. It's getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, but it's always going in the same direction. It's always positive. The most common sort of alternating current and voltage we deal with has this sort of shape. That's a graph of current or voltage against time in a pattern called a sine curve. And the current is then described as sinusoidal. That shape, the adjective, is sinusoidal. So if we have a sinusoidal alternating current, it will look like this typically and the current is continuously changing from moment to moment there is something we call an instantaneous current at any time the instantaneous current is the value of the current is a specific time for example at 80 milliseconds the this is marked in milliseconds at 80 milliseconds the instantaneous current is zero read across the graph at this actually corresponds to 5 milliseconds. The instantaneous current at 5 milliseconds is 10 amps. Changes from moment to moment. The other thing to note is that there is a maximum. The maximum current is called the peak current. It's given a symbol, I subscript PK, or sometimes I subscript zero. Sometimes it's called the amplitude of the current. If we look at our example here, the peak current is 10 amps. We usually give it as a positive value. We could read it off here, it's minus 10, but we state the value as a positive value. The peak current is 10 amps. And if we had a graph of voltage against time, we'd have a peak voltage. Take a look at this graph. Can you tell us what the peak current is and also what the period and frequency is? Pause the video and have a go. Well, the peak current is easy. It's 10 amps. We read the height of the peak off the current axis. To get the period is fairly straightforward. Count the number of whole cycles in 80, second, 80 milliseconds. That's 1, 2, 3. There are 4 complete cycles. So 4 periods is 80 milliseconds. The period is 20 milliseconds. The frequency is therefore 1 over... 20 milliseconds, which is 20 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds, giving 50 hertz. In fact, that's the frequency of the main supply in the UK. One thing to note about a sinusoidal, uh, an alternating current like this, this is a sinusoidal one, is that the average current is zero. Some of the time it's positive, some of the time it's negative. The average value turns out to be zero. And if you followed an electron in a wire when the alternating current was flowing, the electron flows one way, then the other way, one way, then the other, the other way. Start, start again. One way, then the other way, and just repeats that pattern. And there is no overall movement of the electrons. There's no charge flow overall, only vibration of the charge. And the average current is zero. Now, 
a reminder for a simple resistor with a current I and voltage V P is VI or I squared R or V squared over R hope you're familiar with those formula just to jog your memory here's a crude alternating current that we talked about earlier the average current is zero here because it's plus one and a half amps sometimes and minus one and a half amps at other times equal amounts one second one second one second one second how can we work out the power in this case well we need to note it produces the same power output as a straightforward one and a half amp direct current would do that's the current at the bottom and the reason is when the current is negative it still produces heating if current passes through a resistor the direction of the current doesn't affect the heating effect the heating doesn't depend on the current's direction so this minus one and a half amps could just as well have been plus one and a half amps and the top waveform will have the same power as the bottom one so we can just do a simple calculation using one and a half amps do a quick calculation here here we've got a 4 ohm resistor with the current shown passing through it we would simply use I squared R one and a half squared times 4 gives 9 watts one way of looking at this is to consider the value of I squared the average power is actually the average value of I squared times R and the average value of I squared will be one and a half squared because minus one and a half squared is plus 2.25 and plus one and a half squared is also 2.25 so I squared has a steady value of 2.25 whether or not the current is positive or negative okay that will do to start with let's talk about in part two how we work out the power for an alternating current where we've got a sinusoidal pattern to do that we'll learn about the root mean square values